Hi guys, okay, so I am here to do my medicine um, video. It's basically on getting into medical school, like the title says. I will try and not make this video very long, and also um, I've got my phone down here with all my information on it, which is why I'm looking down. Um, okay, so the first thing, step one, is basically to have the right grades. You need good grades to get into medical school, it's as simple as that. It's not the be all and end all but you do need good grades and each medical school looks for different things in terms of GCSEs <clears throat> and um, A levels. So um, I feel like if you've got C's and above in all your subjects or most of them then you'll be fine but you but it is better to have the better you have the better position you're in because the more choice you have basically um um next and the thing also is that some different universities put um a different amount of emphasis on your GCSE grade so you will need to look individually at each university the studentroom.com has a complete list of the GCSE requirements for each medical school how up to date that is I'm not entirely sure but it is your responsibility you have to go onto those universities that you're going to apply to and make sure that you do have the right um like what they want basically the next thing is subjects most universities will want you to do a level of biology and chemistry and then the other one you do is your choice some of them want you to do as um biology or chemistry but i think most of them do require um full a level biology and chemistry um if you haven't got either of them your choices are limited but it doesn't mean that you definitely can't get in um because there's also there's always the foundation courses and all th and things like that so do go on each university's website and find out what they want the student room also has a list of that so you can always look um on that and see what it is that they're looking for um the next thing i have to say is also, no, in terms of subjects as well, some universities, for example, UCL, they give preference to people with contrasting subjects. I don't know if any other universities do that, but UCL does. So if you're doing biology and chemistry and you do history, which is an art subject rather than a science subject, then they will give you preferential treatment. So that's something good to bear in mind. Um, the next thing is work experience. Work experience is absolutely key and a lot of universities won't even consider you if you haven't had any work experience and rightly so too because not only does it prove that you're interested in medicine it also proves it also helps you to figure out if medicine is really the right path for you because you really do see what these doctors do day in day out so it's very good for you to get an insight into what it is like to go to be a doctor and you can also get advice from them on your applications make contacts and things like that so work experience is always really good get as much as you can literally um now that it's the summer um of course if you're seeing this next year or whenever then use the summer before you're um you're 13 to get as much work experience as you can in gps in um hospitals in um care homes um and also another good way to get work experience is by volunteering. Um, it's kind of hard to also to get volunteering, I feel, because um, there probably aren't that many places. But things like hospices, care homes, you don't have to be doing something that requires you to give people injections. Like, no one is going to want you to do that. But, like, just sitting and talking to um, elderly people. I volunteered in a day centre for um, adults with dementia. And it was really cool. And it really was a really eye-opening. So, yeah, that's just one of the things I did. It was for the Alzheimer's Society. They have lots of different centres everywhere. And I'm sure help is always appreciated. Um, you could always also do it in a hospice um things like that and it's really good to um also another another way of getting yourself some patient experience so you know if you really want to be dealing with people um who are sick or um not in the best shape of their lives um for the rest of your life so that's also really good i have personally got my experience work experience through my school and then through con personal contacts and also people um that i met on my work experience so um do ask your school if you're finding it hard send your emails out send your cvs out to um everywhere and anywhere you can explain to them who you are and why you want the work experience and most of them do want to help you so even if they say no they might point you in the right direction or things like that so um the next thing i'm going to say is extracurricular activities um it really is key a key part of be just being a human being not even just applying to medical school but it's really good to 
just get your mind off things good ways to relax if you're joining sports is good for your health good ways to meet friends help you become a more rounded individual so it is important that you're doing other things other than just going to school and coming home and going to school and coming home and studying and it's all it's all, all these things your volunteering work experience and extracurriculars are all good to build up your personal statement and i'm sure you guys all know what the, your personal statement is already um it's basically uh um what was it three thousand four thousand character essay basically on why you want to get into med go to medical school and why they should choose you and um there are lots of information there's lots of information online in books on what how to write it what to do i say start writing it as soon as you finish your exams in year 12 and you can see how good it is so far and how much you need to do to build up your personal statement so you've got the whole summer to um do things that will you be able to put into your personal statement because some people some personal statements will be bland um and empty until you've actually actively done things to build that up um so um i and also do not be shy about telling them why you are a good like why you are a good candidate because the whole reason is for you to sell yourself and i'm not saying sound cocky or arrogant but make sure you are telling them that you are the best um candidate for their medical school place because they do have a lot of applicants and they really want to know what it is that makes you special and um if you've done anything amazing if you've built a plane put that in your personal statement because even though it's not really to do with medicine they will want to know if you've started your own business put that in your personal statement if you've done organized charity bake sales put that in because these are all things that will make your personal statement more interesting to read and if you think about it these people are normal human beings and if they see something that they've seen in every single personal statement they're really not going to be that interested but if they read something new that's going to make your personal statement stand out to them um for a, obviously for a good reason hopefully um don't if you've been on crime watch maybe that's not the best thing to write on there um but yeah just write make sure you're selling yourself as much as possible and showing them why you're so interested and make sure your enthusiasm for the subject without being too over the top comes out um the next thing is the uk cat and the bmat um i'm not really going to explain what those are because you can look online and um i don't want this video to be too long but um in UCAT preparation what I used was the ISC medical book the 600 UK cat questions I personally didn't like that book because I felt like the questions were so ridiculously hard and they did make me kind of lose faith in myself and I was really nervous before the UK cat because I just thought the questions were going to be as hard as what's in that book and they're really not they're a lot easier so I would recommend using the UK cat website and maybe other books that, you could, that other people can recommend to you I personally have can't recommend anything else because I only use the UK Cat website and that book. So, and the UK Cat itself, I didn't do the BMAT by the way, so I can only give information on the UK Cat. But there are lots of BMAT books also. Um, my teachers at school ran BMAT sessions where they went through, went over GCSE. Um, um, physics biology chemistry well obviously you would normally be doing biology and chemistry anyway but they went over GCSE physics and this things that they think you would need to know for the um for the BMAT and I don't, if your teachers don't do that then you might just have to rely on books and things like that and you don't have to buy these books you can just borrow them from libraries and things like that because um they are they're not expensive but they're not cheap either um and also the thing another thing you need to know about the BMAT is that you don't actually you you apply to the universities before you actually do the test and even though there are only four universities that do the BMAT um that use the BMAT at the moment you do have four choices so it is possible to apply to four BMAT universities i would not recommend that i would recommend maximum of one or even or a maximum of two preferably one because like i said you haven't done when you apply you haven't actually done the bmat so you don't have your results yet so you could end up failing miserably if you're ill or your um something's happened recently but basically i recommend only applying to one you could be at university just to be safe um but that's just me i don't i didn't do the bmat so i can't really talk from experience the next thing is interview prep interview prep i think is really key because your most of your actual getting into university will be interviewed the personal statements bit is just like the first hurdle um um oh one thing about the um uk cat and the bmat actually um not the bmat the uk cat is um 
different universities use the UK CAT differently. Some don't even use it at all. So if you don't get a great score, don't be disheartened. Just do your research well and find out which ones will be more likely to pick you based on your score. So some of them don't even use it at all. Some of them use it at certain stages. So um, don't be disheartened if you don't do that well in it. Um, still try and do your research and find out which ones you can apply to. Um, yeah, so interview prep. The book this amazing book that I found was Getting Into Medical School 2014. Um, obviously for the next cycle it will be the 2015 book and then next the year after it will be 2016 book. Um, and they basically actually spell out the process right from um, the beginning to the end. And then part of it is the UK, in the interview prep um, section. And I feel that book was really, really helpful and it was really good. And it was an interesting read as well. So it was really good. Another thing um, is um, the ISC Medical... Um, website they've got hundreds of questions or just over a hundred questions um that they could that you could be asked in interviews and um basically i find it useful and uh, helpful to practice um answering questions impromptu because a lot of the time you may be cut um caught off guard in your interview so it's really good to have that practice of answering questions that you haven't heard before so you can get somebody to just go through some questions with you and even though you're not gonna you may not have the perfect answer at the time it, you will build up the technique of thinking on the spot and connecting the dots from different things and also um you need to be able you need to be keeping up with current affairs to do with um um medicine and the nhs and just the politics and the government in general so keeping up with bbc health news um on the bbc health website and bbc news website on the health section those are really easy to read articles which they are generally made for the general public um to read so they're really easy to read and they just keep you up to date with all the health news there's also the nhs website which where you can learn about the actual structure of the nhs um and also um, you can read broadsheets which tell you um, which go into more detail they're more sophisticated so if you want to know um, more detailed things about um, and different views as well so read a range of different newspapers um, I'm not saying read them all every week but like maybe one each week um, like change the newspaper you read each week so you get like a rounded view because some newspapers do have a certain bias about them I don't know I don't know what I'm saying but another thing to do is to um read medical journals so the student bmj i would recommend because that is made for students so it's not as tough as the actual bmj but you can read that if you would like um and also just make sure you're you're actually interested in reading these things because if you're not then you're going to have a pretty boring life because you will have a lifetime if you succeed in medicine of keeping up to date with medical advances and learning more about um medicine and the nhs and things like that so do make sure you are actually interested in these things and if you're not then just make sure that you still know them because you won't really get through your interviews if you haven't done any research into science and the nhs um the next thing i would say is um and this is actually the most important thing i'd say is that you should choose the right universities for yourself that that fit the stats so if you look you look at your gcses at your a levels at your uk cat or um your uk cat um look at and choose the right universities based on those statistics don't i won't I don't choose universities based on the location don't choose them based on the extracurricular activities they have at the university don't choose them based on um the societies because at the end of the day for other other courses you might you can afford to do that other courses that may not be as competitive but medicine let me tell you now is very very competitive and you have to absolutely have to pick the right universities for you so if a university says we really, really like candidates with higher than 700 UK CAT and you've got 750, apply to that university. If a university says, we don't look at your AS grades at all and you have four A's at AS level, don't apply there. If a university says, we love it when when candidates have um, a, a language at A level, um, I don't know about universities that actually do that, but if and you have a language, apply to that university. Don't choose universities based on super not I wouldn't say superficial because everybody has their own reasons and everyone has their right to have their reasons to want to go somewhere, but don't choose based on um, 
um, on, on like choice but choose based on um, w the ones that will actually um, favour your statistics and I actually made the mistake of applying to the wrong universities and I didn't get into medical school by the way that doesn't mean that this isn't good advice because it is don't worry but um I actually didn't get any offers I didn't even get any interviews actually um because I applied to the wrong universities I'm not going to bore you with the details but if you do want to know um um what what universities I applied to and why I feel like I got rejected then let me know but let me just let you know about my stats what I um got so I had seven A stars two A's and um one B at GCSE and I had four A's at A level AS level and I was predicted two A stars and an A and I had 710 at um my, um, on my UK cat so those are my stats and I don't feel like those are particularly terrible stats so that's just to let you know that you can even though you don't have um even you can have good statistics but still not get in and that is if you make the wrong choices and I also my personal statement I don't think was terrible because I had my teachers look over them over and over again and if it was they would have let me know I, I'm pretty sure so this video has gotten a bit long but th I cannot emphasize how much you have to absolutely choose the right universities based on your strengths um but yeah thank you so much for watching I really hope this has been helpful if you think I've left anything out or I've um um or there's anything extra that you want to know feel free to ask me in the comments i will be absolutely delighted to answer your questions and if you have any more video requests then let me know thank you for watching don't forget to like subscribe and um yeah leave your comments down below thank you for watching bye bye